You've heard the title already, but let me explain a few things before we begin. Beating Sky without a cape sounds pretty difficult, since the cape is used to fly, and flying is a central part of the game. So this isn't, can you beat the game without flying, but can you do it without a cape at all? Does this make a difference? Yes. With the cape, you can actually glide a little, even without using any light. Without a cape, you just drop like a brick, and have very little to basically no air mobility. At all. But you are somehow still able to float using things like clouds and butterflies. So that's why this difference is important. I've been wanting to do this challenge for quite a while now, but I had no reliable way of doing this because I wasn't sure how I would get rid of all of my 108 winged lights. Turns out the answer was not as easy as standing in the rain for an hour. I could make an entirely separate video on that whole process. Also, just so you know, I didn't use any hacks or cheating things to get rid of my cape. I just... I did something else, okay? I wasn't cheating. But anyway, no capes! With that out of the way, let's start the video. Oh. Oh no. We've already hit a roadblock. The aisle already seems impossible. Literally the first thing you have to do is walk through the cave and on the other side there's a winged light and you will be soft locked unless you pick it up. So going through the cave is not an option. Going around the cave is impossible as well because of the wind walls on both sides of the cave. So I guess this run is already dead, huh? Wow, look at the runtime of the video, of course it's not. As it turns out, you can just climb over this part entirely. It takes a little bit of wacky maneuvering, but eventually you'll get there. There's actually a second wall, but just do the same thing and it'll get over it. Wee. Now, in a normal game, you would have to collect the spirit to open the spirit gate. But for some reason it wouldn't allow me to burn any plants. Which I would need if I wanted to activate the spirit. I'm assuming that you would normally be able to burn them if you started from a new save file. Since you probably wouldn't be considered dead like me because of the way I activated the glitch. Which would allow you to burn this plant and get the spirit. Anyway, we can now open the gate and... Whoa, oh we gotta fly up here. Just kidding. Deep call and use the butterflies. And slowly float your way up to the temple. Very... Very slowly. Isle of Dawn, more like Isle is done. D yeah, I got him. <laughs> now just kind of fly somehow. Okay. I guess the devs never expected you to get here without a cape, so there's a path you'll automatically fly through. You can still go up and down the. Oh, oops. Nah, just kidding, I got back up. Prairie isn't even a challenge. You can just walk to the village, ring the bells, wake up the manta, ride him to the temple, next. Now it's starting to get a bit more difficult. Forest has rain, rain is bad, and since we don't have a cake, we can't stay in said rain or we'll die. I do have an umbrella to help with this part, but obviously you wouldn't have that if you're just starting out. So we're not gonna use that. But it's not a problem anyway. With some careful pathfinding, you should be able to make it to. Uh oh. This ledge is too high for us to climb. And the glowing mushrooms are too high up to carry us upwards. But lucky for you, I have big brain. You can simply get up here just before your light runs out and cross the bridge. From here, just drop down onto the mushroom below and you'll be good to go. And from here, it's actually pretty easy. Just run through here, activate the bridge and... Oh no... This part is really problematic. Luckily it stops raining after activating the cutscene, so we have a bit more freedom to experiment with our options. The main issue here is that this jellyfish is too far away for us to simply jump to. Even if we somehow manage to get there, then there's two more huge gaps we can't cross. I tried looking for other ways of getting up to the temple, but it was all blocked off by wind walls or spaces that were simply too high up. I tried for like an hour to get onto the jellyfish or find any other solutions to the problem. Until suddenly, another player flew by. 
That was my answer. By staying on the jellyfish, I was able to follow the player, and the game would simply allow me to fly straight to them, since it doesn't seem to have any behavior programmed for not wearing a cape. I did actually fall off somehow, because this noob was literally being an idiot, but now I knew how to get up there. And I did. Other players are just a natural part of the game, because there's no way to turn off multiplayer. So technically, if you were to do a new run, another player just casually flying by is inevitable. Which means, technically, it is possible to use them to continue the run. But I'll get back to this part later. Let's just move on to Van- Don't go down the tunnel, or you'll die from crashing into walls. Then just slide down, remember to stay away from winged lights because they auto-collect here, and you're done. I was pretty sure this one's going to be a bit more difficult than normal. So, I wanted to prepare myself a little. Now we're ready to go. I started off all the way over here, just so I wouldn't get sent to the cutscene, but once I landed, it activated anyway, for some reason. And I was greeted with someone who really wanted to become friends with me, but they just stood there and stared. It was weird, but anyway, let's just move on, I guess. Wasteland was not as difficult as it seems. Staying away from the crabs isn't difficult at all, and there's lots of objects to hide behind for Krill. This is one of the easiest le- Okay, maybe I should just take the long route. Not gonna lie, this part actually made me a bit anxious, but I got through it. And after that, it's just boom, Ooh. bam, oh, bop, bada bop, boom, pow. Oh. Okay, now it's time for vol. Knowledge. I was actually kind of tired from this challenge, not being able to fly and all, so I wanted to take a small break. But the people there didn't, and I couldn't return home because that would break the glitch, so I had to continue with the challenge. I was actually kind of concerned if the vault would be possible, since some things might be too high up for me to light. The people there already lit the lanterns for me over here, but anyone can do that, so I wasn't too concerned whether or not it would be considered cheating. Second floor. Wasn't difficult at all. Third floor. I had a plan ready for this. I was gonna use these things to fly up to the plan. Oh. Well, okay, well, first off, let's try to see if we can light these lanterns. Yep, confirmed possible. Lighting 8 of these activates the elevator, so that shouldn't be a problem. But let's return to these platforms. I wanted to see if it was possible to get on them to light those lanterns too before moving on it was possible. Okay, next. Fourth floor. This is where I had the most concerns going into this. I wasn't sure if all of the mantis would be reachable, but it turns out they are with this thing. They also frequently dive down to pick me up. No problems here either. Final floor. The mega manta is stuck again. After a little while of waiting, it started moving. I already tried to get onto it beforehand, but anyway, long story short, it also dives down to pick me up. Light the lanterns, go up slowly, or just hitch your ride on the mantis. Either way, you did it! Vault has been completed! Kinda. After the cutscene, you get sent to this room. This is the room before Eden, obviously, but you can only enter if you have collected 20 winged lights. And we have none. I tried looking around for a corner I could push myself through or something else that would let me through the barrier, but nothing worked. So this is sadly where the run ends. Or does it? We could befriend someone with the candle wax we collected on the way and let them drag us through the barrier. Boom, run complete, right? But that would be pretty much cheating. We could have just used the other players for the entire run, and then we might as well just hold someone's hands and let them fly everywhere for us. We won't pick up any winged lights and still beat the game. This is where stuff gets a bit tricky. On one hand, we can definitely use the tools the game gives us to finish the game, and without any winged lights, just like we wanted. But on the other hand, we could have done that the entire time, so we wouldn't have run into any problems ever, which would basically defeat the entire purpose of this run. Even at the jellyfish, we used another player to clear the challenge. Is that even fair? Sure, the game definitely allows us to do such a thing, but for the sake of the challenge, it really feels like cheating. Should we have struggled at the jellyfish for an hour and considered the run dead from that point on? Or do we make the best of it and just use the tools we're given? I did get to the temple without a cape after all, so I didn't really break any rules. 
I didn't use any hacks or cheat codes. The game literally allows me to do things like this. So the question is, do we finish the game by letting another player pull us through the gate? Or do we consider the entire run a failure because it's a jellyfish? Either way, you're probably just curious to find out what happens when you enter Eden without any winged light. Well, here we go! 